Let me ask you a question. Do you eat sushi? Well, yeah, no, I was out with people and they went to the uh, sushi place, the restaurant, whatever it is, sushi house. It's raw. It's raw fish. I'm not eating that. First of all, why do you need a restaurant if you're going to serve raw food? You're not cooking anything. Can you imagine if I did that with chicken, if I came out with like a restaurant or a place and I just had like raw chicken and wrapped it in rice or noodles or something? Oh, it's disgusting. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to take a very simple look at where are the logs for Intune. And if you have issues with device management or autopilot or enter ID join, where should you even be looking? Well, the good news is it turned out they had a menu and they cooked me a steak. But, but that's beside the point. It wasn't raw. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. All right, so I get this question a lot, and it's basically about troubleshooting with Intune and where we can look if things go wrong. So I'm just gonna do a brief overview of some places you can go, kind of take a look in when you have issues. If you have a device uh, that you're trying to troubleshoot, and you click on it here in Intune and you're trying to pull logs from it, you can come up and click Collect Diagnostics. What that's gonna do is that's gonna attempt to grab all the relevant logs and things you might wanna look at, and it's gonna put them right up here in Device Diagnostics, okay, once that uploads. But what if we're actually looking at a device, which we are generally when we're building out Intune, when we're testing, and you know, you have a few different problems. So we're gonna open up the Event Viewer to start let's make this guy a little bigger okay so the first area i'm going to show you has to do with entry join so i'm going to go to microsoft windows and then aad azure ad doesn't say entry yet there is a login here called operational and this is generally where you will see errors if for some reason you can't sign into the company portal, you're not SSOing into things, right? You, you know, maybe the machines joined, but there's no primary user in Intune. This has to do with the actual refresh token. And typically what happens, and you never know with me, I'm doing a bunch of nonsense in here, but we're looking at very specific things. This is where you would find for example, conditional access or MFA errors, right? Basically indicating you couldn't sign in because of what? You'd see the status 400, right? You're not getting something back from the endpoint. And if you're lucky, they will call it right out. So just to give you a for example, sometimes they tell you an app quit, and this would indicate an enterprise application. So if you're, you know, trying to sign into something like a, a third party app or you know, maybe you have, uh, you know, Duo or some other MFA integrated. This is where that comes back as, you know, Microsoft couldn't authorize the token. So whatever happens, uh, you're not going to be able to do your authentication and your sign in. But this is good because this will tell you at least where to look. So think Entra, Azure AD, sign in, SSO. This is where you generally want to look to see if you're having issues. MFA, conditional access. Uh, Microsoft Windows AED operational. Okay, the next area is going to be, we'll say Intune and Autopilot. It's device, uh, device Management Enterprise Diagnostic Provider. I can never remember that name. I never will. Admin. These are your primary Intune logs, right? A policy didn't apply. You didn't get a cert push from a SCEP profile, right? Anything related to that. Um, you can see here, let's see. And you also got a lot of other things too. So <clears throat> in a future video, we'll go through the different event IDs and talk about some of the more problem areas. But uh, things like this, couldn't get an AAD user token. So perhaps I have a policy or app assigned to a user and it couldn't authenticate me. Um, this is, let's see here, it'll tell you when things are successful, right? If there's also the sync back and forth between the device and Intune that's getting parsed here. It looks like uh, I had a BitLocker issue, so I had a compliance status, return with 0x2, right? We're not actually looking at for a specific issue. I'm just trying to show you the types of things that are in here. So this is a warning telling me the OS drive is not protected, right? And this is, of course, yes, the policy says it should be, but I have an issue. So. This is where you would come to see device things. We usually have a lot of luck 
troubleshooting uh, failed policy in here. And typically, you'd be able to uh, find it. Also, app failures are in here as well. App failures are typically in the high, I think the 1900s to 2000s. Let's see. Oh, uh, we're, let's go higher in the list. I could filter, but this is kind of a 101 on this stuff. 2900, oh, hold on, did I miss it? Yeah, so 1901, Enterprise Desktop App Management. Here, an app which was previously installed is no longer installed in this device, MSI product code. So I can look up that code and see what actually is the problem. So an app's trying to get a detection back it's not happening. Um, and I was right. It's right in the 1900s to early 2000s. So terminate with no errors. And I'll tell you if good things happen too. So that's where Intune logs are. Okay. Now we're going to scroll down to user device registration. And this is typically where you'll see things like Windows Hello for Business, right? Uh, during the sign-on, uh, you'll see if you hit problems during the actual uh, pre-join of the device, right? Uh, automatic device during pre-check test complete. Device is already joined. Uh, device cannot be joined because domain controller cannot be located. This is where it runs through its domain joined if you were doing that. Um, basically the things that binds the user to the device. So like I said, Windows hello errors. Sometimes you'd see some entry issues here. It's a good thing to know where that that is. Now, not everything's in the event viewer. In fact, a very important log literally just sits by itself in the log folder. Uh, if we go to our program data folder and we head over to Microsoft and you're going to see Intune Management Extension. The Intune Management Extension is the thing that deploys the apps, runs scripts, right? So there's going to be a lot of information here. Now, I recommend opening this with uh, CM Trace. It's the configure Configuration Manager Trace Log tool came with SCCM. It's still a great way to parse log files for Windows. Um, you can see it'll kind of highlight where there's errors and you'll be able to look at everything, right? This shows you um, when a circuit's deployed. This shows you scripts executing, uh, temporary files being in pack from apps, from the extension. And if you're actually running a PowerShell script within an app, you'll see the actual script in here. So it also has a ton of information during enrollment as well, because the Intune Management Extension, once it starts, um, you can see things about device join, whether it's autopilot v1 or 2. Um, you can see here it says AP v2 is 0, so it's not autopilot v2. And then it starts tracking against the enrollment status page. And of course, everything I showed you, once we do that collect diagnostics and it uh, finally does show up, Looks like it's still pending. I'm not sure if this device was online or not. It's going to give you a lot of the places I showed you previously, right? The event viewer and the logs, but you still have to know to go look for them and, and what you're going to find in what area. Troubleshooting remote deployment can be, well, it could be a pain, right? You're not there with the device. You can't always remote in. We could try to get the logs and, uh, you know, still trying to pinpoint exactly what went wrong between configuring that policy, deploying that app and it hitting the device. It can be frustrating, but I find that at least starting to know where to look under the hood uh, makes a big difference. Again, think of this as very 101. We could go a lot deeper. We will go a lot deeper coming up in terms of uh, more granular event codes and you know what to do if you see this. But just I find that a lot of folks don't always know where to look for these things. So hopefully that gives you somewhere to start. Remember, the members only content launches October 15th. So, you know, if you want to, some people ask me about the membership. I think it's a there's a join button below me. I think it's called join. You could figure it out. I'm not really a YouTube guy, but we're going to start that next week and we'll be seeing you.